it's my pleasure to introduce our guest today, Marcin Mierzejewski from Wrocław University of uh, Science and Technology. I think I got the name correct. In Polish, yes. it's it's much simpler. It's just Politechnika of Wrocław, but in English, it's uh, Wrocław University of Science and Technology. Marcin is expert working on uh, thermalization processes. And uh, today he will have a seminar, he will have a talk on a very interesting question, thermalization of macroscopic quantum system systems, is it unavoidable? Okay, Marcin, the floor is yours. Thank you for invitation, it's a great pleasure to, to give the seminar. So I will talk about, about thermalization, it is some part of my research, and so the, 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 this will be essentially about macroscopic quantum systems. And the outline of my presentation is like this. I, I assume that it should be a, a general uh, a general talk, not really focused on some uh, very specific problems. So I would like to start from from like quite quite quite, quite big uh, introduction on thermalization. And I would like to convince you that it is something that is very, it's really obvious from our uh, everyday experience. But uh, if, we, if we leave aside this everyday experience, it is quite remarkable how this thermalization uh, arises from the, uh, from the dynamics of quantum systems. Then I, I would like to uh, discuss the basic basis hypothesis which uh, explains uh, thermalization in macroscopic quantum systems it is called eigenstate thermalization hy hypothesis and at the end i would like to discuss uh, to to ask the question if we can find systems which avoid thermalization and if there is some time at the end of my talk i would like to present also some my, my results Okay, so uh, let me uh, let me start from this everyday everyday experience. Very trivial example is that one can imagine that in one somewhere in the world, some new uh, exciting compound is uh, uh, is discovered, like this uh, high TC superconductor. It will not be to to the topic. Of, high TC will not be the topic of my talk, but nevertheless. Uh, and the, this, this discovery is, uh, is, uh, is accepted by the community once it is repeated somewhere else. And this, how, how this experiment is repeated, it looks like this, that uh, there are basic information about the, the, the chemical, uh, chemical uh, elements which are in this compound, about the details of the chemical synthesis. And this, this information is passed to some other place in the world. And what is important, this information is passed together with essentially quite few information like temperature at which the experiment should be carried, carried out, the pressure, maybe magnetic field, just few, uh, really few information. And this is enough to reproduce this experiment and to confirm that uh, this, this, this compound uh, really possesses some interesting uh, properties. So now if we would think about some simpler uh, mechanical system like pendulum and we would like we would like to make some experiment using the pendulum and we, we would like to repeat this experiment fully in some other place we would need to pass the information of course about the details of this pendulum also we would like to specify the initial conditions like the initial velocity and the position and, but now if we go to more and more complex systems like five pendula, then, then it would be, we would need to pass to this new place more and more information about five initial positions and five initial velocities. And if we think in this context about this previous example is that we really repeat experiment on very, very complex system. And uh, the number of atoms in the systems is of the order of Avogadro number. Then if we assume that this is a classical system, we would need to pass as many as the number of information uh, about these initial conditions. It is proportional to the system size. In quantum system, it's exponentially large with the system size. And we don't do it. Instead of passing this huge amount of information, we just say few, we just pass only few basic informations like this temperature, pressure, and magnetic field. And this is the question, how, how it is possible? So how it is possible that the system, uh, so many information is not important 
uh, in this everyday experience. So uh, let's 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 think about the, this thermalization of quantum systems more uh, more uh, explicitly. So we can assume that we have some model, like the Hamiltonian, which describes the system which we study, and we let's assume we are able to solve the Schrödinger equation. So we we can prepare the initial state or we don't know the what is the initial state but this must be some combination of the eigenstates of hamiltonian and we know uh, how this break in the communication oh i'm sorry it's a final thermalization what happened sorry 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 can you you cannot hear me no i can i can i can i can, I can perfectly hear you and see you marching Okay. On my side, all is okay. Okay. Perhaps it would be good if you could please repeat the last sentence. Okay, let me go up. Uh, I, I cannot. So, okay, so, 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 okay, now, now I would like to discuss uh, this, uh, this, this effect that so many information are not relevant for the experiments which we uh, carry out, how, how, how we can think about this in more details is that let's, so we have this system described by certain Hamiltonian. Let's assume we can solve the Schrodinger equation. So we, we know eigenstates and, uh, and, eigen, uh, and the, the levels of the system. And the, initially the system is prepared in some state. We don't know this coefficient Cn but we know how such state propagates in time. Uh, and then what, what, what will be the, uh, the result of the experiment? It will be expectation value of some observable with the state which was propagated in time. Okay, so what, is, what, 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 we, what, we, what would mean thermalization? What, what would mean thermalization for this, for this expectation value? So eventually we would, we, we expect that at long time, this expectation value will be time independent, that the system, that the system will uh, approach the stationary state. So this, we, this time independence we can call equilibration. And the second, even more demanding uh, requirement is that this value, this expectation value in macroscopic system at long time, it will agree with, stat with equilibrium statistical mechanics. And this, this again, this agreement is obvious from our everyday experience, but it does not follow from the time evolution. And I will discuss it in more details. So what means thermalization? Thermalization means that the result of this measurement will depend only of, on few parameters, as which I mentioned before, like temperature, magnetic field, density of particles, but it will not depend on, the, on this choice of, the, of this, of this, uh, of this uh, factor Cn, which are preserved in time. Okay, so if we go to let's say standard handbooks on statistical physics, and we we, we would like to find explanation what is the origin of thermalization, we quite frequently, especially in older handbooks, we find that the thermalization occurs because system is connected, is never perfectly isolated from the environment, and this and that means that. This information about on the initial state somehow flows uh, to environment and it cannot be recovered anymore. But so 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 let's say this basic uh, explanation for thermalization is not is not fully satisfactory. Why? Because uh, we know that in in some systems the thermalization is really very very quick. It can take it can occur on the time scale of the order of picoseconds. And if we, if, we, if we calculate what is the distance that light travels in such time, it will be just millimeters. So if this thermalization, so this independence of the, of the results of experiment in the long time on the initial condition would be connected with that system is coupled to environment, then we would face some problem. The problem would be that the relaxation time would depend on the system size. The bigger system, the longer it would take to thermalize. One could not avoid this paradox. So thermalization, uh, thermalization uh, at, at the moment, let me just 
think about it as the independence of the uh, uh, of the initial conditions uh, it must be a property of macroscopic system so there is no need to to connect macroscopic system to environment to to have this property so how we can understand it that uh, that this this macroscopic systems thermalize despite they are not connected to environment so then in, uh, we always in physics we measure some local operators local observables which are uh, which depend on the properties of only small subsystem of the total macroscopic system let's say the subsystem a and then the rest of the system let's call this subsystem b it serves as environment so macroscopic systems they don't need environment because they they are they serve as their own environments okay so now now let's 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 be more specific and we would like we would like to 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 see that in can the i ask the question yes please uh, anytime yes i mean i i disagree with this statement i mean if i take a i mean the, if i take a macroscopic system and i put it into diabatic wall then it will and if that is the thermalization is a property of the diabatic wall or not the size of the system I mean the 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 huge I mean if you take a thermal thermal flask right it thermalizes the interior of it which is macroscopic system or, or contains a broth or a, or a cucumber soup or whatever it thermalizes not by because of the content of the device but by the diabatic wall and of course eventually it will thermalize because it's this diabatic wall which is which is uh, not hundred percent. So, so you 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 don't agree. So are, what you are saying to me that if I will take the a thermal flask which is superbly done, and come and the diabatic wall of it is, is perfectly not con, not exchanging anything with the environment. Yes, that soup will thermalize. Yes, if if you if you take appropriate limits, so if you first go. Yeah, I, I'm not talking about the. I'm talking about the soup. I mean, it's a physical phenomenon. I, Wait, you I first I, you have I, to I define. You have to. You are continuous. I mean, you are. You, you have avoided the definition of a thermalization. I will. I will look. Let me. Let me. Let me. Okay. Look. Because, let me. Let me uh, but look, you. You question the, the the fact that if we have macroscopic system, which is perfectly isolated from the environment then measurements of local operators will give you the thermal uh, the same result as equilibrium statistical mechanics yes this you don't agree no, with. no 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 if i will uh, that is not true because that's not what the equity that's what statistical mechanics is telling i mean if i have a cis physical system in whatever state it is yes however excited if I will put it instantaneously into the ideal diabatic wall, I, I stress that assumption about the wall, then it will stay in that system indefinitely. Yes, it must be. It must be coupled. Yes, this is this, this is. The, yeah, but I, so if it's not coupled, then then I then it, the question is that maybe we are talking linguistic now. I the, think, uh, I, think you Jordan, mean I the, propose what you mean by the thermalization. I propose to move on because Martin promised that he will define thermalization yes. uh, in the next slide. So I suggest to yeah, this is this is this is this is really this is really okay. Uh, so so what is this? What, what equilibrium statistical physics for closed system tells us that the system should approach micro the approach micro canonical ensemble. Okay, that's 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 the uh, that's the equilibrium. So for classical systems in the phase space, it means that the system with uniform probability occupy all, all states, uh, all, all uh, points in the phase space with equal energy. And in quantum systems, that uh, we will, this, the, the system will with uniform probability occupy all states in the narrow energy window. Okay, this is, now I, I, I hope I am, I am, I am precise. So, so the, the precise definition is that if we start from the system uh, where somewhere in this 
narrow energy uh, uh, with states in the narrow energy window, that means in the long time, we should get the same as all the states were equally uniform, we will be all populated with uniform probability. Yes, this is micro canonical ensemble, and this is equilibrium, equilibrium statistical physics for closed systems. Okay. So the classical for the classical systems, this is this is ergodic hypothesis. And then maybe I will uh, that it tells us this hypothesis that uh, during the time evolution. Uh, the uh, the system visits uh, every region in the phase space, which is allowed by conservation laws, energy conservation. Maybe we can have some other conservation laws. And in the long time, it spends uh, in each region. Uh, the time which is spent in this region is proportional to this volume. And this is this is the standard explanation for thermalization in classical systems. And maybe one remarkable thing is that despite this is so basic, so basic phenomena, so common phenomena, it is still a hypothesis. Uh, it, is, it has been shown rigorously only for very, very few systems like this uh, Sinai Billard, which is, which is shown here also for the uh, Bunimovich Stadium. No, this is the Bunimovich Stadium, and, but only for few systems. And now, now the, let me move on. Okay, now the the let, now let's come to quantum systems because in quantum systems this thermalization is really peculiar. So again, we have statistical physics, which tells us that if the system is in equilibrium, then expectation value of operator, it will be the average of the diagonal matrix elements of this observable in the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian but they are averaged with equal weights. So there is some only some constant prefactor here. So this, we should explain how this kind of averaging is reached within the dynamics uh, of the quantum states, which we know. So again, if these are eigenstates of the Hamiltonian with the energies En, we know how such state propagates in time. So we can calculate the expectation value in this state, some observable A. So what we see first, we see first that this quantity is time dependent. It's not obvious how it is, how it becomes time independent. So this, this first step of, of thermalization, it means equilibration, this time independence. Uh, we can imagine, I would not, not like to discuss it in too many details, is that uh, if we go to very long times, uh, the if we long to very go long times, these contributions which come from different energies they oscillate so, so strongly in time and they average like they, they deface. And if the energy spectrum is non-degenerate, what is what is the generic situation in quantum systems? We end up only with the diagonal elements with the diagonal contribution to this expectation value, which will look like this. And here it's the main problem, because in the uh, equilibrium situation, we have averaging over all eigenstates from narrow energy window, but with equal weights. Nevertheless, if we do calculations, we, if we calculate uh, time, uh, time evolution, this initial weight, so this, uh, this I'm sorry, this memory on the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the initial wave function is preserved up to arbitrary long time, the CN still exists. So the question is, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. So the question is how to how it happens that this expression becomes equal to the exp expression from the uh, from the equilibrium statistical mechanics, and the, the the explanation is really trivial. The explanation is really trivial. It means that or this is this hypothesis, it is not explanation. This eigenstate thermalization hypothesis tells us that all these diagonal matrix elements for macroscopic systems, if energies, uh, if, if we have energies, uh, states which are close in energy, then they are all equal. If they are all equal, it doesn't matter how we do averaging. We can do averaging with any weight CN, which, which decode the initial state, we always get the same. So this is the essence of the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis is that we don't need to do averaging because each state, each eigenstate of macroscopic system is already thermal. 
it has the same the same result so 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 uh, so again this this assumption that all diagonal matrix elements they all that all diagonal matrix elements are equal in the thermodynamic limit again provided we stay in the narrow range of energies it tells us how the uh, it explains how the uh, the this 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 expression from the time evolution equals or becomes uh, the same as the expression from equilibrium statistical mechanics Okay, so now the the first question is: Can we? Uh, uh, the first question is: Can we find uh, really good examples where it is fulfilled? So this is fulfilled in the by by the random in the mat random matrix theory by random Hamiltonians and random operators. And in the random matrix theory, we these matrix elements of of observable. It is uh, they they have diagonal part, which is a constant plus all the other matrix elements diagonal and off diagonal they fluctuate uh, they fluctuate so this r is some random variable with mean zero and various one but you see that for finite systems for, the, for finite systems these fluctuations they decay as square root of the dimension hilbert space so they decay exponentially with the linear or with the with the uh, with the with the volume of the or, or with the size of the system they go exponentially down so one might be happy that okay we have some theory and we have this random matrix theory where it works this assumption and it explains but this random matrix theory is not really the full story why because in the random matrix theory there is no temperature dependence it means there is no in the random matrix theory we cannot explain why properties of systems at low temperature are different than at high temperature and essentially all observables has, have equal relaxation times. So this is also not what we see from experiments. Different observables may have different relaxation times. So what is, what is necessary? It's, nece it's, it's necessary to go from the random matrix theory to some ansatz, which we call Shrednitsky ansatz. It was, it was formulated uh, in 1998, 96. And also there, there, there is a contribution by Deutsch, Joshua Deutsch. And this generalization is as, as, as you see here. So this is the essence of the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis that the matrix elements of, op of physical observable in, in macroscopic systems, the diagonal matrix elements, they, have, uh, they, are, they are some smooth function of average energy of the states here. So, so it will be just the energy. So this is how we encode that properties depend on temperature. And then these uh, this, uh, fluctuations, which in the random matrix theory, they decay as square root of the, of the dimension of the Hilbert space, they go as expo exponent of the entropy. entropy. Of course, entropy is, uh, is extensive. So we also get exponential decay of these fluctuations uh, with the system size. OK. So, uh, so how, I mean, this is a hypothesis. It has been tested. So this conjecture that, that, that in macroscopic generic systems- uh, the Sorry, can I ask? Because- Yes, go ahead. Uh, like earlier you mentioned uh, like that you're being interested in local observables uh, that probe your quantum system. And now all of a sudden you went to this random matrix theory like details. So like yes. to what extent, yes. like is it justified yes. that- this is perfect question. This is really perfect question. As I, I have on the next slide is that there is no rigorous understanding which oper operators satisfy ETH. This is still the, the most open question, which operators will satisfy it. So this is in the random matrix theory, of course, we lose locality, yes. And this in ETH, we have numerics, which we test mostly for local operators. And for local operators, we see that the eigenstate the thermalization. Can I, can yes. I make a sh short comment? Yes, yes. Uh, this assumption about the, mean, the matrix elements M, A, N on the top of the page. Yes. That there is this diagonal piece and the little correction to it. And yes. that written correction has a coefficient which is proportional to the square root of a sum quantity, which measures the size of the system. Yes. Here it is exponent of entropy or whatever, right? 
Yes. I mean, if you will get to the a paper by Nico van Kampen from a 50s, which is published in the first volume of the NAFIC conferences on statistical mechanics. There's editor was, uh, I, I believe it was still already Eddie Cohen. Then you will find out the analysis of coarse graining, how quantum mechanics explain, and that is precisely the same argument. And of course, Nico van Kampen at the time, he didn't hear about the random matrix theory. So he had been much more uh, arguing on the physical grounds than that. Uh, so okay. I, I, yeah. I, I believe this is uh, uh, a, a, a tribute yeah. to, to Nico van Kampen. This is, so I mean, I would, I would not want to, to, because it was not me, so I, it's not so important for me who was the first and who should be. Uh, oh, but I mean, but that, that, uh, that, that idea has been the basic idea of the, of the coarse grading approach, which, is, this is at least okay. This is what I'm talking about. Is this? Uh, this is. I think uh, it is by most people. It's considered as the extension of these predictions from the random matrix theory to, to to realistic physical systems. Yes, where we have temperature and we have like entropy instead of the dimension. And it is there are some other formulations or, which are equivalent to the ETH. And the, 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 of course, I, I, I don't want to defend that, that this answers by Srednitsky was in conflict or, or that it was never mentioned before. No, it's not. No, no, no. Okay. Very plus. Okay. 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 So, uh, pardon, Lehu, you were online. Okay. Okay, so so this 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 eigenstate normalization hypothesis it was tested many many times, um, mostly numerically, and this is I think many people try to test it numerically. So what we see is that this what what you see on this plot it is the the example of our let's say our numerical test. So we take some op, uh, local observable. So here we can, when we do tests, we can control local and non-local operators. And I let me be specific. We can easily point out operators which will not thermalize, but this is which are not mostly non-local and one can easily show such operators. So this is not true that any operator will, will thermalize. Them. But I will let me come to this to this to this point a little bit little, little bit later. And anyway, so one, one plots the diagonal matrix elements of this operator versus the energy of the state N. And this is this point is what one typically gets for big systems. So there is the structure, and this structure was missing in the random matrix theory. This is this 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 value, which is essentially this 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 the structure. So AE, it is exactly the microcanonical value of the operator in in uh, if the system is has energy E. But on top of this, we have fluctuations, this uh, which go which go exponentially with the system size. And let, there is, I think, uh, let me also come. So this is this is that I think that the main challenge still now in the ETH is I think that we have not found or people have not found recently any uh, disagreement with ETH. So any clear, clear system, clear evidence for the system which is generic. Uh, of course, there are systems which don't follow it, like integrable systems, and we know why. But generic systems follow ETH. There is some other approach to thermalization, which is called typicality. This is a little bit different, and this is a little bit simpler even. It means that if we take, if we have, let's say, a set of states with energies in the in this narrow window, but we have still a lot of states in this narrow energy window, and if we randomly choose some state from this narrow energy window, then and we, we, we can, we can, uh, we, we can uh, repeat such random choice of, the, of this of the state from this narrow energy window. So typically we always get the same. We always get the same simply because we have 
exponent or we have a, a lot of states in the narrow energy window in the micro canonical ensemble. But this is not the same as ETH because ETH tells us essentially that we don't need to do any averaging because the ETH tells us that each of these eigenstates is thermal. We don't need to do any averaging. So now what is, what, what is the difference between this ETH and typicality is that in experiment, we, we usually we don't study typical states. For instance, typical states have no current. The typical state has current zero. And we quite frequently can do experiments on, on states which have current. So this is, the, the, in, the, in that way, the ETH is, 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 is better or explains more than, than this uh, simple trick with typicality, which follows that we have some typical state which has projections on many, many eigenstates. Okay, so um, now- Sorry, can I ask one technical ahead, question? Please. So just following on your comments about this ETH, so, in the model, when when I take my Hamiltonians, say from GUE ensemble, so they are highly non-local Hamiltonians, yes, right. And let's say I'm interested in purely local observables, let's say up to locality k, like k is the number of subsystems, uh, like number of sites, let's say, yes. right. And so those observables are characterized by huge degeneracy. I mean, degeneracy, right? So people in this model are not able to prove rigorously ETH no. kind of mathematically just I mean uh, as, as far as I know there is no rigorous proof of ETH okay. that would be really strong if one can really uh, rigorously prove ETH but I am not the for one this model for this GOE ah, you mean so for random matrix so you you mean this 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 expression yes right so what I was thinking of was like Ham the global Hamiltonian or the structure of energies is like from GUE, but then you uh, combine it with local observables. Okay. Uh, this is this. I don't know. I, I I don't know how. I mean, I think the problem would be. I look. I I don't know the 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 the, the final answer to your question, but I think that it will be pro problem to to define local quantities within the random matrix theory. Yes, then this, this, this proof of locality, this requirement of locality would be quite complicated. Yes, because there is a random, full random matrix. It's really hard to say that, even it's really hard to say that Hamiltonian is local, yes. I think that the direction in which people go now is they try to show that that uh, physically relevant uh, local Hamiltonians that the eigenstates are essentially the same or they have the same properties as the proper as the eigenstate of the random matrix. So the properties of the eigenstates of random matrix is the same as the properties of the of the physical Hamiltonians with which are local. And, but I think this is the problem, yes? This is how I see it. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So let me briefly, I don't think I will have maybe, because I, I think I still have like uh, 10 minutes, yes? Uh, you can make it 15. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Pardon, Marcin, can you, can you please come back to the previous slide? I have, I, I, I have one, no, 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 the next one, the next one, please. Yes. The next one. So this typicality is it meant in a in a mathematical sense of uh, the small large deviation? So we yes. have those random yes. CN. Yes. And yes. this typicality means that the large deviation of uh, CN from this uh, fixed C is uh, exponentially dumped, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. This is exactly. This is this is that. This is exactly what you are. Taught. So this is this is. This is strict, but you see the, the difference is here that okay, we, we think that typical state must have projection on many eigenstates. And such state which has projection on many eigenstates, where C and are let's say random, there can be no current, yes, because uh, such random choice will not break like a time reversal symmetry of the Hamiltonian. There will be no current, okay. So this will not explain why uh, what happens with current yes but that is linguistic i mean let no, me come not. back to the problem of the thermal flask i have a thermal flask in with exact fantastically superbly made diabatic wall around it 
But you see, thermal. And what do you mean by the what do you mean by the local observable? If I have the ability of measure a local density but within you, the thermal flux. But you see thermal it flux. It is in a completely thermal equilibrium. Yeah, the thermal the density flux. will fluctuate from one point to another. And therefore, see. there is a current. But you see. But it is a local current. There is no global current. But the thermal so the question is linguistic. What is actually a definition of your A? I mean, in the statistical mechanics and thermodynamics, these yeah. objects, what is meant to be thermalized or not, are precisely defined to what kind of variables these notions do apply. You see, and they do not apply to the microscopic measurement of the little density fluctuation within the completely thermal equilibrium system. Okay, okay, this is so, okay, look, so this. Most quantities which we measure are, are local, so it is, it is the sum of local operators. Yes, sum. So this is like like. But what do you mean by that? I I I have this example with the thermal flux. Is the local density okay. in the middle of that flux a local operator? I can define that operator. So like like this is like let's I have some Hamiltonian so which I can use. Yes. <laughs> so you see, this is local, yes. Local or Hamiltonian like Heisenberg model is local. Okay, it, it contains terms which are defined, uh, let's say, in the uh, they are supported on few sides, and then we have the, the, the sum over the whole system. So this is this is extensive local operator. This is this is what I mean, okay. And for any system, I think, or uh, or local magnetization, or ma magnetization, or the total momentum, all, all, all the measure quantities which we typically measured in experiments, they are local, yes. There is nothing like that. I have one operator which is on the left side of the system and the other operator. So this is the, the like product of two operators. One is on the left and the other is in the middle. This will be non-local. This is the this is for me local and non-local, okay? Okay, 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 okay. So, okay, so let me, I think I still have five minutes. I will definitely have no time to show my data, but anyway. Uh, me... Maybe we, since there was a little bit of discussion, discussion on the way. Uh, but that's five minutes. Absolutely, minutes. I, I, I completely agree. So we give you March in 10 more minutes if you need them. Okay, that's, let me, let me, so let me briefly tell you what was the big excitement in the last 10 years about this many body localization and why. So if we agree on this picture of thermalization that macroscopic system is a bath to itself, so that, uh, and we would like to say, how can we avoid thermalization? And then the answer is quite simple, we should, decouple some subsystem from the rest of the system. So we would need something that is perfect insulator. Of course, we know in the, in the physics, we know perfect conductors like superconductor, but the question is, can we have perfect insulator so we can disconnect some finite subsystem from the rest of the system and avoid thermalization? And the question is, uh, if we know such systems, and the, so so the, there is uh, there there is such system. Yes. So so in uh, in quantum in quantum in quantum uh, qua there exists such quantum systems. The, these are disordered systems. So and this is this story goes back to really like 1958, like to, to the Anderson insulator when we, if we have let's say a chain at, at certain positions in this chain, we, we incorporate impurities or some scattering potentials. And then what was expected initially is that if one increases the number of the scatterers, then the, the conductivity should gradually decrease. But what was surprising is that suddenly for certain disorders, so for maybe for certain strength of the scatter, 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 scatterers, then the uh, conductivity is strictly zero. So the, these are perfect, they are perfect insulators. 
So what? So what? what me? What, let me let me explain you maybe on this plot what is the difference between uh, Anderson insulators and all other insulators which we know in physics. And for instance, on the left hand side, we typically deal with bent insulators. Mod insulators I also consider as bent insulator. There is a gap in energy spectrum, and because of this gap, the system is local is is insulating. But once we excite some particle from the from the occupied band to the empty band to the uh, then we the excitations are not localized. They they the excitations are described by extended states, and uh, so so this is not perfect insulator because excitations conduct. But in Anderson insulator in this disordered system. Um, the the, um, the the difference is the following that all states are, are localized we don't need gap for in the disordered system to to have localized system because all states are localized you can think that we have we have some low energy state here and we excite particle from this low energy to high energy state as here but still this excited state is also localized, so it will not be conducting. So this is really perfect insulator. And then I will skip maybe this part. What was this, what was this, 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 this story about the many body insulators is that Anderson insulator are not generic. Anderson insulators are not generic in that this is non-interacting, this is the physics of non-interacting particles. And the question was, and this is already not generic because it means that non-interacting particles means that we artificially tune all many body interactions to zero. And then of course the question is, can we have system with many body interactions, which is still perfect insulator? And this is open question, I think, uh, because People know that electron phonon interaction, like maybe not necessarily phonon, the coupling of particle to bosons uh, already destroys this picture of perfect insulator. But like some time ago, there were people who, who, who assumed that, in this, that, that there are systems which have many body interactions like the Heisenberg chain. And if we add a random field, uh, then, uh, then the system, then the system can still be perfect insulator. And this is, and this is about this, so such systems, so far we know only one, these systems, and only some part of, some, 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 some examples of many body interactions. And there are claims, or at least I would say that till the very, very, uh, let's say few or three years ago, people were fully convinced that these systems are also perfect insulators. And let me let me tell you, okay, just a few words about how experiment is done. So the experiment is really simple. I mean, this is beautifully simple because the experiment is really testing whether the system during the time evolution still remembers about the initial state. Yeah. And the experiments in, are done in cold atoms, like, like so one has like, let's say uh, th this will be like uh, optical lattice and one at time zero puts particles on every second lattice side. And then the system propagates in time and one calculates what is the correlation between this distribution at certain time, at best it would be time, time infinity, and the, and the initial state. If this, is, this correlation is non-zero, uh, then, then it means that system would never forget about this initial state so it would exclude thermalization so this this is so simple thinking about the correlation in the long time regime of the state in the long time regime and uh, in the initial state and so this would be mpl and maybe i will now just come to conclusions and maybe just tell you what what uh, what was what what, what would be try to do so what okay so so what my, my main main focus on the talk was on, on the that thermalization is really generic phenomena of of even isolated micro macroscopic systems there is no need to have really uh, external bus to have thermalization and that there is a possibility of avoiding thermalization in uh, in generic systems but what was this? I mean, this our study, which I I, 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 I forgot to give tip. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't want to bother you with like details now. That, 
we think that this this MDL system is not really uh, or we have indications that this many body localized systems they are not really perfectly insulated they are not perfectly uh, uh, perfect insulated. Uh, pardon pardon we have some interference from Omid Makmali please switch off your microphone thank you that the uh, our thinking is that uh, our thinking is really that the following that uh, the Anderson insulator so non interacting the system with disorder they are really perfect insulators and in certain sense they are integrable because one can diagonalize this non 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 interacting hamiltonian and to put it to the form which we know for non interacting particles and these occupations, they are these local integrals of motion in, in integrability. And then our approach, our 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 uh, approach is that when we add interaction, some of these local integrals of motion, they are not, they don't commute with Hamiltonian anymore. They decay in time with very, very, uh, very, uh, very uh, at very at very long time scale, but still at finite time scale. And it explains essentially a lot of data which one can obtain from the from the numerics. So I think with this, I, I let me th uh, let me thank for your attention. So I mean, I mean, the, the 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 short conclusion would be that still there are I think some doubts whether if we have system uh, which is disordered and it would be perfect insulator, it would not uh, thermalize without many body interaction. If we put many body interaction, that maybe the thermalization is extremely slow. It can be slowed down, but it will maybe it, it can never be completely eliminated. So this is really generic. We don't see any generic system, maybe which avoids thermalization. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Martin, for the for the very nice talk. Um, now we had some discussion on the way, but um, perhaps there are more questions. I have a very simple yes, question, namely thermalization means that at the end there is some temperature that is being involved in this system. So what is the temperature that such a system at the end has and how it is defined? Okay, okay, thank you. This is, this is a fantastic question. This is really good question. So the the, the the temperature is uh, so we so the the we we need to start from some combination of states which are in the narrow energy window and then then the energy we really at the end in this uh, in this also in the eth uh, we have this average energy so we should know at which energy we do our calculations experiments and then this this energy th there is really energy and then from from the energy we can go in a standard way to the entropy and from the relation between energy and entropy we can get temperature but the essence is between this random matrix theory and this eth is that here we build or even here we, we can see that he you see that we have dependence of this matrix elements on energy of the states and this gives us temperature yes thank very excellent question thank you very much for this question yeah uh, professor turski you have your microphone muted please unmute the microphone hello professor turski your mic is muted okay. we haven't heard you yes now we hear I'm, you. i disagree Go ahead, with the please. statement because uh, temperature is defined by the zero law of thermodynamics. And that means that the temperature is defined oh, no. by the interaction no between way. the object which we want to me measure the temperature it and the device which is called a thermometer. But zero, zero, zero law of Zero law of them. I mean, it the question is that right, in right, all right. these ideas, there is a mixture of the concepts from a thermodynamics and the thermodynamics is a science about the microscopic objects, which is a very formal, mathematically formulated. 
Okay. And it's a very important that we pay attention to the words. Okay. There, okay. There, is a, there is a quantity which you can call a temperature for microcanonical ensemble, but this is a temperature which you cannot measure because there is nothing with which you can measure that temperature which will not destroy the okay. idea of the interaction of the content of the microcanon of that system with the external world. Okay. But Therefore, we can call various quantities whatever we want. But wait, but let, let me let me answer maybe. Uh, I, 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 I guess you agree that zero load of thermodynamics tells us when the temp temperatures of two bodies are equal, yes? But no, there are, they, they have to be three bodies. Yeah, they because have the zero law is a transitivity phenomenon. Yeah, this is A is in a contact with B, and A is in a contact with C, then B is in a contact of C. So they, you need yeah. the three bodies, yeah, at least need, three bodies. I, essentially, the, the zero law of thermodynamics tells you that you can define the empirical temperature and you can and it tells you the method how you can divide classify all objects into classes of objects we have equal temperature i understand that the previous question was on the scale of temperature it means how we can see something differences at low temperature and at high temperature and low and high temperature notion has nothing to do with the zero law of temperature this is clear yes i think you agree Yes, no, there is, I, there is I, no. I, I mean, I can either agree or disagree because the definition of a temperature is ambiguous in your statement. Okay, the, the temperature. I mean, if you have a, the, this micro canonical system, yes, then I can call a derivative of entropy, which I define at that time by an arbitrary way. There can be, I mean, if I have a, if I have a, Microcanonical system, and if I define the entropy going, for example, the, on the steps of the Stuckelberg, then the temperature will be very different than if you were define the entropy in a von Neumann way. Okay. So I mean, which, okay. and, and and the discussion which is the better temperature is meaningless because okay. if I have just the microcanonical ensemble, then I cannot fulfill a zero law of thermodynamics because I have to put that dumb thing into contact with something. And that means there will be exchange yeah. of energy or Very whatever, good. or there whatever is, is used to measuring the there temperature. Also the, there, there are also, the, the, there is the question of limits. Yes, you put a macroscopic body in contact with some other macroscopic body and the, the interaction is scales scales with the surface of the contact, the, the, the energy of system scales as the volume of the contact if you take appropriate limit. And then of course the, the interaction between two bodies is some pertur per pertur perturbative approach. I don't think you have some disagreement really. No, look here, my, 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 what I wanted to say is that this, this ETH tells you how dynamics goes to micro canonical ensemble. And then I would say that the notion of temperature is the same as in the statistical physics in microcanonical ensemble. That's it. If you don't like microcanonical ensemble, what then? Then I think that also you would not like. I I, I like the micro. I, I uh, like pardon, pardon, pardon. I, just I wanted, want to, I wanted to interrupt here a, a little bit because we can we can go on like that uh, like that perhaps uh, when the official seminar until is thermalization. Over. Until yeah, <laughs> uh, yes. Until term exactly. Until until we thermalize or or we don't thermalize. Actually, if I if I may, I I'd like to ask Martin like how important since since the last the last minutes of the discussion <clears throat> have been con concentrated around temperature, but out of the thermalization, the whole thermalization process, how important actually is getting the notion of temperature? I always thought that the most like important fact and, and fascinating fact is this forgetting about the initial conditions. Yeah, I mean that, that, that I, I mean that I, I, I mean look I would say that here the more the, the instead essentially we don't we, we don't discuss temperature in I, I mean at least I, I'm not in, in the context of this research we mostly focus 
on this average energy, where this narrow energy window is placed within the whole energy spectrum. This is for me equivalence of temperature. If, of course, there are there there might be subtle differences or problems with this one-to-one -one understanding, but this is this understanding. So, in typically, we don't discuss temperature. We discuss that something happens in some part of the energy spectrum. Uh, we 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 some so place somewhere, and this is for me equivalent to temperature. Okay. So yeah, that was that was also my my impression actually that yeah. what you are trying to get here is actually yeah. micro canonical distribution yeah. Yeah. somewhere. Yes, yes, exactly. This is this is we we the, the idea here is to go is to go from the time evolution to micro canonical to results of micro canonical ensemble and not to go into details or some if the, if there are some inconsistency about defining temperature. Okay, yeah. Mm. I, if I if I may, I I have one more uh, one more question. Since they they have there have been some um, uh, questions regarding locality in your picture, where the macroscopic body is actually uh, is sort of like averaging over itself or or itself as its own environment. Uh, would you please elaborate more how you? define local observables so that we okay. don't have any doubts here. Okay, okay, so like, uh, like I, I, let, let's say that this is, so okay, this, this locality for the disordered system, then the notion is a little bit different. So the, the idea is that this is Hamiltonian and the, the, it's obviously local. So we have this this part of the Hamiltonian, so the nearest neighbor like spin. So it would be like the energy density. And this is really quantity, which is uh, this operator is supported on, let's say, few sides on the chains, few sides on the system. And then, so this is local in the sense, in the very, very strict sense, yes, that it is in some place in the system. But then the sum of these operators is still considered as local. This is sum of densities is still local. What would be non-local? Non-local again would be like non-local quantity would be that we have something at site one and then we have something at site, I don't know, half of the system, yes? The product of such operators, not sum, the product of such operators, then this is non-local. For instance, uh, the projection, if we have eigenstate of the of the Hamiltonian, the projection on an eigenstate, this is operator which is Hermitian, but it is in, typically it is non-local. You cannot split it into such a, such way. So in in in, in the, so this is locality. Okay, this is locality. Okay, so 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 locality is in a sort of like a geometrical sense. It's it's locality in in sites, space, however. However, yeah, your, your system is arranged. You add local operators and then you still, you, 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 let's say you, you still consider this as local, yes? So some of local operators is physically relevant local operator. But let's say something acting on site one and some, something acting on site thousand, it's, it's, or any other site, product of such two operators, it would be non-local because you see the projection on the definitely what the the operators which not thermalize uh, like it will be like projections yes projectors on the eigenstates of hamiltonians such operators cannot thermalize this is clear yes we we know that how they evolve in time and they will just oscillate or or be time independent but such projection if you try to express in terms of of local operators you can do it of course but then you will have essentially products of all possible operators on all possible sites. So such, such quantities don't, don't thermalize. Yes, they will always, they, they don't thermalize. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. That, that explains, uh, explains the thing. Uh, any more questions? Well, I don't see at the moment, so I think we can uh, thank Marcin again for thank you for this seminar.
Thank you very much again for, for the very Thank nice you. talk Thank and the discussion. the discussion. Thank you for the discussion because you see the majority of talks on Zoom are just uh, noiseless. I mean that there is just speaker talking and nobody responds. So I, it's really fantastic to have discussion. So yeah. Thank well, you. if you if you want a Zoom response, then we invite you to our seminars. There is, <laughs> uh, there is a lot of it here. We, we, we try so to keep we, it we will have an example of a phenomena which does not thermalize. These <laughs> or the zoom in the center theoretical. exactly this is fantastic. exactly this this seminar is not going to thermalize <laughs> it's really fantastic and this is really something that we really need especially now in this covid times when we just be qu are quiet thank you <laughs> thank you again Mark. Let's okay. thank you very much COVID. let's thank covid you. that the covid will okay. thermalize hopefully <laughs> hopefully <laughs> hopefully maybe in summer thank you thank you a lot Thanks, Martin. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Cheers.